Oh. 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 <laughs> I'm not headbanging. Wow. I'm driving to go do an overnight here to test out a new tent, and I was hoping to get some snow, but hokey smokes, man. She's coming down, boys and girls. I'm hoping it stays like this. We'll see how snowy it gets. Okay, there was not this much snow when I left my house. <laughs> it's coming down. All right, this looks like a good spot. What I'm looking for is a decent amount of open ground so I can set up my new hot tent. And I want to be somewhat in the woods. And this spot fills both those needs. I'm Joe. We're out today in the winter forest, northern Ontario, Canada. This is the first real dumping we've got. And as you can see, it's like a foot and a half deep. So we got a new hot tent from Nortent, a Norwegian company. We're going to set it up, test it out for actual winter camping. This is just to be an overnighter. Uh, we got some good food to cook up. It's supposed to keep snowing. It's supposed to actually have snow squalls all day long. So I'm really excited to be out here in this. See how much snow load the tent can handle. And uh, just, just dip my toes into the winter camping thing again for the first time this year. So in my sled I had a duffel bag here that I got most of my gear in. And then I just had the tent. And then I had a, a backpack with lightweight gear in it. So as far as the tent. I took the poles out already. I actually took the whole tent out, but I didn't hit record. So the poles are out of it. With the, t with the tent, it comes with this pretty cool uh, cinch buckle system. The material is still nylon. Still, still nylon, or rip, rip stop nylon, sorry. Might be still as well, but it's rip stop for sure. And it's lightweight. It's good quality. So you can cinch it down. It's got a duffel bag, carry case. Poles fit into it. I'm actually pretty impressed by the tent. I set it up once in my basement. I have not camped in it. Keep that in mind. Um, the tent is a nice thin ripstop. Might be still nylon. I think it is still nylon ripstop. And then the poles are color coded into two spots. It's really easy to set it up. Let's get it going. Before we get our tent set up, I do have to clear a spot. Okay. Luckily the snow is very light. It's not packing snow. It's not humid. So that's gonna be a bonus for removing the snow. The camera's getting pretty wet with snow there, but it's pretty tough. It's been through some stuff already. <laughs> How warm this gets you. Whew. All right, I gotta take off some layers already. Whew, we're getting somewhere. Okay, I gotta get rid of that stump there. Make some more room right in the middle. Ooh, I'm glad none of that fell on me. <laughs> been pretty lucky there hasn't been too many big logs underneath the snow. Just able to move all the ones I needed to. Believe it or not, this stump was not left by me. All right. Oh, snow is a falling everywhere. Man, so much snow, guys. So very much snow. 
Oh man, there's just clumps of snow. Oh, <laughs> clumps of snow falling everywhere off these trees, man. <laughs> I do like the winter. I do like winter camping. It is quite fun. My hands are a bit chilly, but I'm trying to cool down so I don't overheat. It's not that big a deal. I do have the hot tent. It's not that big a deal. I got two pairs of gloves this time. I actually got quite a few little uh, amenities and fun stuff to do on this camp, so hope you guys will be interested in that. La tent! La tent! There's some snow falling. Hey? Whew! We're gonna do it. We're gonna get this done. I, I, I swear, it'll happen. There, okay. Will helped me put this together in the basement. It was nice with two people, you know? So there's a sleeve on the outside. It's running through the sleeve. And... Coming out the other side. And then being fit into the foot thing. The foot thing, that's the technical uh, Nortent, Norwegian term for it, foot thing. All right, well it's in that one. Uh, it's snowing, did I mention that? My plane is here too. And then into this one. All right, one side, one pole done at least. No tent. I did not know what to expect, and I'm happily, happily surprised. All right, get this situated properly. There's no floor on it. It comes with an inner tent, but I didn't bring it because I don't need it in the winter time. Okay, now we gotta put the outside poles on. It's a pretty strong tent, I would assume, to hold up to winds and things like that. Ah, so much, so very much. No, in my face. It's uh, snowy. Oh man, it's coming in. Woo! Oh, this is what they mean by a snow squall, I think. Pokey smoky guys. Artichoke you guys. Oh, it'll be easy to lose stuff in this type of snow. Gotta keep track of everything. Pretty good. I've got this tent almost all set up. Just gotta get this last peg in, or sorry, this last pole in and peg it down. Okay, and then once that red pole is clipped, or sorry, is uh, oh, I put in the foot there. You just kind of go around and put it into place with these clips. I like the fact that it's a dome shaped tent. I don't have many of those and I don't have any hot tents that are like that. So that's kind of cool. There's this little uh, carabiner that you have to squeeze to depress and then it clips on both of the poles to keep it from going anywhere in high winds or whatever, which I think is a good design. Maybe a little difficult to deal with with cold hands, but we'll see. Time will tell. All right, let's get on inside. It's got this snow skirt on the bottom, which is helpful. You could uh, pile snow on top of that if you didn't want to put stakes down, or as well as putting stakes down. There's two doors, which is nice. And there's a screen attached, which is nice as well. Oh, oh! <laughs> I'm not headbanging. 
Oh my goodness, some snow. Oh, this is plenty of room in here for me. We're gonna clear out all this crap though. Now this camera can get some a respite from the snow coming down on it. Okay, get that guy out of the way. We'll leave that open until we get all our stuff in here. I haven't been here for all that long and my, all my gear is covered. Okay, let's see how dark it gets for filming. Let's see. Oh, that's still doable. Perfect. All right, I hope my camera's working all right. It's really, really wet. I'm gonna have to dry it out here in a minute. We got some goodies. Definitely got some goodies. And I'm happy about it. A little bivy can go over there. What we're looking for right now is the stove. This is my Winterwell fast fold titanium stove. Had it for a long time, I have never used it. I have set it up, but not burned it in. So let's get that all squared away. So again, the Winterwell fast fold titanium stove. I don't know if I need this piece, I hope not. She's pretty bent. I believe this is the spark arrestor for the top. Got some instructions just in case. So this is the stove pipe. This is a long sheet of titanium, like sheet titanium. And this is the stove itself. Oh, and the rings that hold the stove pipe together. Top comes off. This feels pretty flimsy to be honest with you, but it is titanium, we'll see. Again, I've got to do the burning and everything. So this is all attached. Okay. And this goes like this. Relatively easy. Okay, that's a box basically now. You can use it like that too. You can have a fire right in there if you want it without, without a top. The top goes on. Nice and easy again. And it's the same kind of uh, latch systems for the top. there open there decent decent size so this is the part I'm not too sure about rolling up that stovepipe I've never done it before and I've heard that it can be a little uh, a little touch and go for the per first little bit stove jack is there right there I think we have to go on the outside though and open it up too okay well after much frustration this is what I've come to like, this thing got bent, man. Bent to crap, and it's not completely the way it needs to be. It's a little bit diagonal. I can fix that. And this side's better. It's okay. I can fix that by pulling and pushing. Okay, I could fix that pulling and pushing there. Now it's completely the perfect way it needs to be. No diagonal at all. But when I let it out a bit, it goes back diagonal. So I think I need to stick it in the, in the stove to keep it straight. It's not great. It's it's not great. It's not ideal. Like, look at. I don't know if it's even going to be airtight for the smoke to come through, but we'll see. That's all part of it, right? I've never put one of these together, like I've said. So, anyways, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rings on it. I think it's 
get it in there and and try. I don't know, guys. We'll see. to pull the stove jack back on the outside here. It's getting very cold, I'm soaking wet and uh, I need to get this thing going, so I'm gonna line it up properly. Uh, you hear that? So this goes right in the middle of the tent, which I'm not normally super fond of, but that's okay. And look at the spark crusher. It might add some structural integrity, which I never even considered at first. So I don't know what these clips are for either. Oh. I bet you this all helps with the structure of it. I'll be pleasantly surprised. All right, let's just try and get this on. See if we can do that much. There, much more straight. I did myself. Okay, yes. Yes, Joe. Where were you 10 minutes ago? Okay. I'm feeling better about this. Yep. The spark arrestor thing helped things quite a bit. Okay. It's as good as it's gonna get, I think. Uh, I just wonder, does this go over that? I wish I would have done this before. No, it can't. Maybe it can. Slide that down. All right. Okay, after all of that, let's get a good burn in going and see if it will uh, smoke in here or if it's gonna be all good or what. Go get some birch bark and some twigs. First burn. I've got the door open and I'm gonna get out of here once this is going. You just wanna be able to get all the oils or whatever off of it before you, you don't want to breathe it in is the point. Get a good burn off. Everything's a little wet. It rained last night and then it started snowing. Don't see any smoke. Holy smokes. I don't see any smoke coming off of the the stove. Even with the uh, door open, there's some steam coming off the ground for sure. You can see that there. But as far as smoke, I think it's pretty good. None off the stove pipe, for sure. You can hear the snow hitting it and melting. So that's with the flue completely open. You can see the flames getting sucked up there. Close it a bit, changes it. Close. That's closed all the way. And it's still not smoking out with the door open. That's pretty good. But we'll leave that open for now. Put a bunch more wood in it and do a proper burn in. But as, as of now, it's it's looking good, man. I'm really happy with it. We gotta get these vents open up here too.
check it out. Pretty cool, huh? The uh, tent has these Velcro uh, stiffeners that will prop up the vents all the way around. So they got two, three, four of them. And then this is where the this is where the inner tent would attach. Pretty cool little setup, man. There's also these vents down here that you open up from the outside. Secondary door, which is open underneath right now for some reason. Let me shut that. I like it. I like it. It's not airtight. You can see the flames coming up through those vents, but it's not smoking at all. I think this is a good imperative part too. Cool. All right. Oops. Pure heat coming out of there. No smoke. It's getting a little foggy. Lens is fogging up a touch. Steaming up quite a bit. I told you guys I was real wet. I got a good amount of firewood in there now. It's burned off pretty good. Just chilling out. I still have to go get firewood, but I'm just warming up for a minute here. Letting myself dry out. Check it out, the pipe is starting to temper and get a cool patina. So is the top of the, the wood stove. Nice. I like it. Alright. We'll get some firewood though. Look at all the steam. <laughs> the ground's drying right out. down touch too. Just a little bit. Got grandma's axe with us this time and the Agua 24. Do some serious wood processing. It's definitely warming up in here. No question. Use the 24 in a while. I forgot just how much uh, extra oomph you get out of it. Just three extra inches makes all the difference. Okay, we'll split up these few and go feed the fire again so it doesn't go out. And I have to go get a bunch more wood. This is not enough, it's soft wood. Try to keep everything where I remember it.
Oh, boy, it's kind of warm in here. Oh, I can smell the whatever's cooking off the stove in here. Not smoke, but like chemical, oily. That's why it's a good idea to get out and let it burn off. I should have done it more, I guess. Oh well. The damage is done for old Joe at this point. <laughs> Nice bit of coals in there though. It's just soft wood so far. It's, it's promising. I'll leave that open for a second. Got my bigger axe, just this stuff isn't very big. Woo! All right, off to get some hard wood. Off to get some hard wood, some wonderful hardwood from the woods. Well, we didn't need to use the instructions. It's uh, always a first for everything. We got the Generation 2 ground sheet with wool blanket. This one is much bigger and thicker. Uh, I guess they said that people were requesting for that, so they made a bigger, thicker one. I'm happy to have it. We're going to get it set up in here. Bushcraft Spain for the wind. I'm probably going to sleep by the door, to be honest with you. It's the best spot, but I'll get my stuff set up so I don't have to do it in the dark. And I can just move it after easily. Divvy, which I didn't need. I didn't need both the ground sheet and the divvy, but we got them. Because uh, we could, because we had a sled. <laughs> Why not? The old pillow again. Sleeping pad. Sleeping bag. here. This wood is super dense. Very happy I brought the 24 inch. Show you in real time, I promise. I just want to give you, get you a gra you guys to get a grasp of how dense it is. Not too shabby, but pretty dense. On the dense scale, it's up there.
off canvas. I can't be throwing wood on top of it. Different ball game though, right? Lighter, way lighter, less bulky. Just different. Not better, not worse. All right, I'm really hungry. Let's start getting our food going. Got more wood to cut, but there's plenty of wood in there. It's gonna get dark soon. Losing light. This will be the first hardwood in there. Cut some thinner just to get it going. Ah, posty. I've got good food, very good food that you've never seen me cook before. Looking forward to cooking it up and most of all eating it. There's snow out there. I want to show you guys what I'm going to cook for dinner. I have vegetable oil, quite a bit of it, and I got my cast iron pan. And it's pretty deep, right? So I think I can make french fries in this. I think I'm going to deep fry potatoes, cut up french fries with potatoes, I think I can deep fry them in this on the stove. So let's, before anything else, let's do that. Well, this is brand new. I did not know that. I said, well, do we have any, what, what oil would be good for the making fries, she said. None that we have, but try this one. That's the whole bottle in there. I sure hope that's enough. And I sure hope it's not too much. So we got that. Getting warm on the fire. Hopefully getting hot on the fire. And I've got a burger. Uh, a keg burger that I'm going to fry in this little guy. This was one that was at the fort. I took it home and cleaned it up all the rest of it and then I'm gonna put gravy I'm gonna warm up some mushroom gravy in a pot and pour it on all of it together with some salt and pepper and I have cream corn to go with it so that is a uh, old-school nan mom type cookout for me at least I got my two potatoes here I got my Leatherman wave here and it's got a can opener on it but it doesn't look very good, so we're going to test it out and see if it works. I sure hope it does. Oh, yeah. See, I, last time someone, or a bunch of people told me you have to pull. I always thought you had to push. But I guess pulling does make more sense. Much more sense. Look at that. Well, thanks. Comment section. Been doing it wrong my whole life. Corn's everywhere. Not quite. It's hotter up there. Wait a little bit longer. Yeah, I should do it slowly. Uh, it's getting there. I don't know if it's as hot as it should be. Okay, it is bubbling good. That's probably about as there's more fries that I cut, but that's about as much as I can fit in here, I think. 
and still do it properly. This is enough anyways for me. Okay, so this bug. Mesh I obviously don't need. I can tuck that away. We'll do that too. They're not getting gold in it yet. That's what we'll judge them by. Well, they're looking close to me. I think they're done, like, they got some brown to them. They're pretty crispy. You know what I mean? Not soggy anymore. They were soggy for quite some time. I was concerned it wasn't going to be too hot. Like, it wasn't going to get hot enough to do it. But I think I just had to leave it in for a little bit longer. Because it's, uh oh, there goes my headlamp. It's, uh, yeah, it looks good to me. They're not clumping together. They're all free floating. They're browning. They're crispy. All right. We're going to, uh, I'm going to take these off. I got the corn, I got the corn on there. And we got to get the burger on here. Got the backup flashlight out. These are definitely, oh yeah, these are golden -y. crispy, these are done. Okay, I didn't bring a napkin to drain them on. I should have, but I didn't. Okay, tell me those don't look fantastic. We gotta try one right now before we cook the rest. Mmm, that's a french fry. Okay. I'm looking forward to this, man. Where's my, where's my burger? Where's my burger at? Okay, the keg burger. The quote unquote fancy restaurant in Canada. Corn. And burger and gravy cooking now. This corn probably can come off actually. Been on there for a hot minute. So first, fries go on. Then, the bell girl. Wow, that's juicy. Making sure she's cooked, she is. All right. Gravy to go on here. Oh yeah. Little gravy with your food, Joe. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Thanks. This looks good. This looks super good. I guess I can get this off here. I'm so warm and comfortable in here. It's a good setup. Got salt and pepper. Mm. All right. My cream corn. Oh, scalding hot. Scalding hot. Mm. So in Canada, we have poutines, or poutine, which is fries and gravy and cheese curds. And you could put other things like mushrooms or onions, whatever, in it too. This is kind of similar. No cheese, though. No cheese. Mmm. Mmm. 
Oh, I can taste the nostalgia for me. This is like a cheap way to make a filling, decent tasting meal. This is what we grew up on, things like this. Mm. I was so hungry. Oh, man. All right, that was so good, I friggin' devoured it. Now I'm gonna get into the cream corn. Looking forward to that, too. I might even put some salt on that, treat myself a little bit, you know? I'm getting the hang of this stove, too. Remember I told you guys on the last uh, hot tent trip with Tripper that every every wood stove, I feel like it takes tweaking and getting used to, and this one, this one was brand new to me, just like the last one. Just doing some after stuff to clean up. All right, this beeswax was sent to me from Missouri, Branson, Missouri, from a subscriber years ago. Just warm it up by the fire a bit, or by the stove a bit. Kind of paint it on, and it's going to get clumpy, and I'll rub it in after. And actually, there's a. I want to fill in the crack here. Yeah, right there. I want to fill in the crack with wax. A little waxy crack. Waxity cracksity. And then I'm gonna do a paracord wrap around it. Oh yeah, that filled that right in. Sick. I'll do a paracord, paracord wrap around it, and then uh, hopefully it will strengthen it and protect it from future abuse. I don't want to put a new handle on it. Not yet. It's a very nice handle and it's going to be hard to replicate it. Just prolongs the life of the handle a little bit more. I haven't done that to my... I haven't done regular maintenance to my axes. I should. I do it every... I used to do it a lot more than I do now. Even for storing them, like um, my basement's sometimes a little damp. I've actually had mildew on the, the leather. I to get it off. Okay, that's all on there. You can see, I think, where I filled in with the wax. Let's do a a whipping. It's called a whipping. Uh, when you whip a tool handle, like an axe or a, a hammer or something like that. So we'll use paracord. And we'll do a, a whipping right now. A whipping. Oh, did I just drip wax in my... Oh, well. Won't matter if I did. A little bit more beeswax on the crack. Just to really get it in there. It's going to be all covered up anyways. Alright, when you're doing this, I'm going to start with piece the length you need or a little bit longer you're gonna make a hope you can see this you're gonna make like a loop with the tail and the running end will have have it longer and you're gonna lie lie it down on your tool longer than what how long you want to whip it for so I have it down to about there can see this so I only want to go to about here and I have a little bit left hanging out outside of it I'm gonna lay it flat 
take the running end, come down just a little bit past the tail, hold it tight. And I'm going to start to wrap it tightly around and make a loop at the top. All right, you can see what I'm doing there. And you want to keep them tight together close and tight to the axe handle or whatever you're whipping. This will create strength and give you a little bit of grip, protect the axe handle from getting damaged if you're splitting things like me. All right, we're back. Back with whipping tool handles with Joe. Okay, so now that we've got it to the top where we want and it is all tight and secure, you're going to take this tail end now or this running end, whichever, you're going to pass it through the loop that you created originally, right? And now once that's in there, you're going to take the tail at the bottom and pull everything through. Yeah. Okay, and then once that's in the middle, once you think that the knot part is roughly in the middle, I'm going to cut it a little long. on both sides and I'll melt it I guess I'll use a lighter I'll melt it uh, shut I was gonna use the stove but it's hard to reach here with this so I want it to attach to the other piece of paracord so get it nice and hot kinda of tuck it down in there so it's all melted together, not going to go anywhere. And we'll do the same on the bottom. Now the big test is if it will still shut. There we go. Okay, so that's protected now. Like, uh, that's on there tight. It's good grip. You know, I might even melt some wax on the outside of this. That's not a bad deal. Not a bad idea. I'm going to melt some wax on the outside of this thing and, uh, and secure it even more. Snowing again, heavy. I can hear it. That's raw beeswax, so that's going to take on color as it gets used. It'll be grippy and keep it. Oops, keep the the moisture out of it. Keep it on there tight. Ooh, I'm excited about this. There you can see I how I waxed it all around. It's solid. All the grooves have been filled in. Pretty slick. Oh, the axe works a hundred times better now. <laughs> I just a joke. I make a joke. The sides of this tent do get wet because of the heat on the inside. But that's indicative of any sil nylon hot tent that I've ever seen. It's to be expected. The cotton or the canvas doesn't sweat like that, obviously. Well, this stove isn't warping too bad or anything like that, and this is all oak and big bed of coals, and it's been going ever since I started it, so it's, uh, it's pretty uh, impressive, actually, for a small titanium stove like this. Let's do three logs on the bottom. Pull it good.
shelves up here and dry them out. Actually, I got another pair that I can do that with too here. Got the pipe glowing pretty good, man. Time to damp that down. Here it changed right away. Stops glowing right away too. <laughs> Put a fry on there, a potato on there, I don't really know why. <laughs> Cook up a fry, I guess. Yeah, it's much more flat and level over here. Good thing is there's two doors in case I needed to get out and I didn't want to step on my stuff or whatever, but <clears throat> it's no big deal. I'm right here. So where do I want my head? Yeah, I want my head there. I'm gonna lay down, feed the fire a bit, and watch it. From this vantage point I can kind of see through the grates, see the flames bouncing around. I can open it up if I wanted to too, but either way. I'm just gonna lay here, go to bed uh, in a little while. It is, it looks like 9:30, 9:45, something like that. The phone's over there, but I'm pretty tired. My back's bothering me. I want just want to lay down more than anything. I like it. I like the space, man. Dogs could be in here with me. Another person for sure. Cool being in the dome, like I've said, I'm sure before. Oh, oh, it feels so good on my back. Oh, my goodness. Hunched out, hunched over all day. Poor little hunchy back. Alright, guys. Oh, my back. Like, I'm gonna relax here and pass out probably within a few minutes. I'm not going to bother getting up to stoke the fire in the middle of the night. I'm just going to rely on my sleeping stuff to keep me warm. But we'll get up in the morning and make bacon. No, pancakes. We'll make pancakes with chocolate chips and syrup. That's what we'll make. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. All right. Like I said, I'm going to lay here, watch the fire for a bit, and pass out. Good night. It's 6.30 in the morning, you can see frost all on the sides of the tent here. I just got up and stoked the fire again. Actually, I just started it. It was almost out. There was a couple little embers in there, but it's not bad for all night in a titanium stove. I'm headed back to bed for a little bit. Well, she's glowing. It's about time to get up. You can see the light coming through the tent now. I had a really good sleep, but that thing is just glowing, man. That's what I like about a bivy. You can kind of just pick it up and move your whole bed, bed roll around. Yeah, these are like 90% dry. Cool. Better than being frozen, right? <laughs> Used to waking them up and waking up in the morning with them frozen. All right, let's go see how the tent performed with the snow load on it. What did I just do? Um, how the tent performed with the snow load on it? I I can't see any snow on top, so it obviously all melted and fell off. 
none came in the little hole in the bottom. I did, you can peg out the bottom so that it, the, the fly, I'll show you. There's no zip on the bottom uh, of the, uh, this. There is on the bug net, but there's a little tie out and you just pull it like that. So no uh, snow or rain would get in anyways. And there's good ventilation. I think there's another tie out here. But anyways, let's open it up and see. Look, there's ice all on the bottom of it. Oh it's, oh, it's a snowy day. A snowy day. Yeah, the snow all fell off of it. That's pretty good, man. Like, if you look at the... You know what I mean? There's quite an accumulation everywhere. And the tent is clean. Don't sneak! What you're doing? Why is it sticking? Son of a gun. Okay, let's get into this freaking pan crumble. <laughs> Disgraceful, Joe. Disgraceful. Look at this is a the most pancakey part of it all. Hmm. Taste good. using gloves yesterday they're just slipping everywhere though but maybe now with the soot it'll be easier this isn't so bad crinkly though all right well that was easier rolling it up than it was uh, making it into a stove pipe so there there's there's an upside. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, that was great. This ring fell off too. But that's pretty small. Pretty small for a, a stove. And I stayed more than warm. I, I, I don't doubt this thing would keep me warm in the middle of like cold winter. Like that was like probably like negative seven or eight last night. Like, and I'm sure if I, this thing's small enough that if I stoked this thing up, had a bunch of wood, I'd, I'd stay warm and dry. Um, where's the other piece? So this is the other pieces here too that are kind of uh, blocky. This one's fine because it goes right behind the stove and it's it's the same width as it. But this is the this is an important piece I think actually too. And I guess it doesn't matter if it gets folded flat because you can still just put it around after. So it's not that big a deal. And then this guy. So I don't really know how it's supposed to all go in this case without getting kind of crunched but Seems to work okay. Not too shabby and probably weighs five pounds maybe. Not even. Okay. You know, putting things away, packing them up when you're at home is one thing, but after you're done camping, it never seems to go back the right way. Or as small as it was, even if you have less gear. It's just the way it goes. Okay, so that's not so bad. Maybe an hour to break down camp completely. Let that thing cinch down. Yeah, not bad, man. That's how much it snowed last night. I guess there was some in it from me pulling it, but not too much. The shovel's here somewhere. Oh, 
always a good idea to face it the way you're going before you load it up so you don't have to try and struggle turning it around. With this small sled, it's not that big a deal, but one of those bigger ones, that's where that comes in. I also do have all of my pots and pans and cookware. Like I said, all of this stuff was packed away in all this in these two duffel bags, or this duffel bag and this backpack, and now I've got this whole other bag full of crap somehow. But no fear, we've got paracord to tie it down. Beautiful. It's a beautiful morning.